So, you've done your plasmid extract, you have an epitube with some DNA in it, but how much is in here? Now, you could say, okay, well, there's 50 microliters, but that volume is not a very useful number. What we need to actually know is how many micrograms or nanograms of DNA you have, and so it's much more helpful to get a concentration of your DNA sample. And for this, we'll be using spectrophotometers. Spectrophotometers are actually very sensitive, and so you don't need to use your whole sample. What you're going to do is you're going to make dilutions of a small part of your sample, and you're going to save the rest. Now you're going to make a 100-fold and a 1,000-fold dilution. The reason we're making two is that at least one of these should give you an accurate reading with your spectrophotometer. So the way you're going to make this dilution is you are going to take five microliters of your sample, which is a very small fraction of what you actually have, and you take that five microliters into a new epitube, and to that you will add 495 microliters of TE. That will give you a total volume of 500. So if you want to know the dilution factor there, it's 500 total volume over how much you actually put in, which is five microliters. So you have just made a 100-fold dilution. Next, you're going to take 50 microliters of your diluted sample, transfer it into a new tube, and then add 450 microliters of TE. This will once again give you a total volume of 500 microliters. But this time, if you divide the 500 by the total amount that you put in, which is 50, you will see that the dilution factor is 10. So now this new sample is 10 times less concentrated than your 100-fold dilution. And so 10 times 100-fold means it's a 1,000-fold dilution in total. So this sample is 1,000 times less concentrated than your original, which is hopefully at this point sitting in a freezer. Now that you have your dilutions done, you can go ahead and test your samples. The first thing you need to do is put a blank into your spectrophotometer. In this case, we were using 1XT as our diluent, and so we're going to use 1XT as our blank as well. In this way, the only difference between our blank and our DNA samples is the DNA itself. So put in the blank, press the blank button on a spectrophotometer, wait for it to take its readings, then take your blank out and, and put in your 100-fold dilution into the spectrophotometer. Press the read button and see what numbers it gives you. Now the numbers you're interested in are the ones at the top of this readout, which is the absorbance at 260 and the absorbance at 280. Once you have those numbers, you're going to then use two different formulas. You're going to calculate the concentration of your sample by taking the absorbance at 260, multiplying that by 50 and then multiplying that by the dilution factor, which in this case is 100. And that should give you the concentration of your sample in nanograms per microliter, which you can then easily convert to micrograms per microliter. The other calculation you need to do is take the ratio of the two absorbance values that you just wrote down. You're going to divide the absorbance at 260 by the absorbance at 280. And the number that you see here should give you an indication of the purity of your sample. In other words, how much of the sample is DNA and how much of it is other stuff. In general, if your 260 to 280 ratio is close to 1.8, that indicates relatively pure DNA. If your ratio is higher than that, closer to 2, there's a good chance that you have a lot of contaminating RNA in there. If it is lower than 1.8, then it's probably an indication that you have some contaminating proteins uh, and other organic compounds, like maybe some of that phenol that you thought you removed in the procedure. Maybe some of it was still there and you didn't notice it. And so they're going to lower your ratio. Okay, so now you know the concentration of your sample, which is good because you'll need it for the next set of labs.